What's up guys, I'm J-Rod of Battle Brawl Production, and I am gearing up for one of my closest friend's wedding, I'm the best man in it, and since we're going to be traveling, I thought it would be a good time to actually film a video showing you guys what my travel art supplies is, because a lot of people have been asking this, and I have refined my craft to be perfectly on the go. <laughs> So we're gonna start with the bag, and let me just say this is my absolute favorite backpack I've ever had. I've had roller backpacks, I've had normal backpacks. The messenger bag is my absolute favorite. I love this bag. Now, I've had this for like seven years. It was a Christmas gift from my mom. It was actually when I left PCC, she gave this to me, and this thing is amazing. I absolutely love it. For one, it's super high quality. The fact that I've had this for close to like seven years, and it's still in almost perfect condition. There is some wear and tear, a little bit here, a little bit on the inside, I'll show you. But for the most part, this thing's pretty good. I absolutely love the color scheme too. Black with these little hints of blue. Would have preferred red, but I still love how it looks. The only thing that makes me worry about this bag specifically is that it has these plastic clips here. I would have preferred if they were all metal or just something a little more solid, but they've lasted this long. I think we're fine. I do love this. And one nice thing about this bag too is you can actually open these pockets up and you have a nice little bag right here that you can carry normally. Really good for on the plane. This bag is something you can really grow with. So if you're a college student who expresses himself with pins, perfect and then as you start going into the professional world you can remove the pin super professional another nice thing about that that I wish was standard with all messenger bags is you can actually pop this zipper open and then pop it again at the bottom and you can actually if you have a travel suitcase that has the extending handle you can put that through here absolutely love that feature I use it a lot when I travel very very nice and you can see I have a lot of pins on this too I'm a big fan of expressing myself and I have my favorite pins right here along with a bunch that I've had some I've had for literally 10 10 years. Like, I had them since I went to PCC. In fact, my old backpack, believe it or not, I actually had so many pins on it, I guarantee you I was bulletproof. But yeah, I got the pin that I was actually married with, because this was on my lapel. Two pins from Sarah Kling Mothman and a little penguin with a knife. And my friend gave me this. This one's a gift from Jesse. We'll make art for food, which was very appropriate. And then I have a couple other random pins in here, like this little doxing thing Sarah gave me. Just some random fun ones like Ant-Man, Iron Man, Avengers. I was going to say Ghost Freak, because I've been watching Ben 10, but it's actually Ghost Busters, Ichigo, a random alien, One Punch Man. This was cool. I actually found this at PCC and I thought this was really nice. This carnival one, again, I got in my honeymoon. I absolutely love it. And then this one here, I got comic shop for free. So just a bunch of random pins just to express myself. I absolutely love how this looks and I can always remove them if I want to be a little more professional, but let's be honest, I'm not professional. Another nice thing about this bag is that it does have a leather bottom. I don't know if it's faux leather or real leather, to be honest. When the bag's full, it does sit upright, which is really nice. Now, of course, if you do overload one side or if it's empty it does have trouble staying up for the most part it's going to stay up pretty well which i do like and something i do want to note is i don't know the name or the brand of this i think it's called spec because that's the name on the tag on the inside right here if i pop this open you can see oh you can kind of see it there yeah so that's the only name that i find in this little messenger bag and i wish i knew the actual name of the bag itself because i love this bag if this ever breaks i'm buying the exact same one this thing is amazing i've been looking at the bag that jazza has been making and it looks good it's cool i probably will get it but there are features of this bag that Jazz's bag does not have and it makes me hesitant in upgrading. But let's start going into the detail of the stuff in the bag and then I'll also show off pockets in here as well as we go along. So I'm going to start with this back pocket right here. The one that honestly doesn't get used a lot. I mostly just keep stencils in here which is pretty nice but this one is one I don't use. Now one good thing about this pocket it's really good for just like one-off papers like if you go to a convention if you're traveling an airport I like to put my pointed papers in here but I can also fit an 11 by 17 block in there which is super nice because that's what comic book pages are that's the dimension so that's really good and if I ever want to work on some stuff on the go that's really what this bag pocket is for moving into the main pocket right here this is really where the fun begins so I'm just gonna be pulling some stuff out of here and I'm gonna start with my two sketchbooks now originally I only kept one sketchbook in here but I went from a Strathmore mixed media sketchbook to this really nice render sketchbook I absolutely love it it's by Crescent super amazing and it is 100% marker proof which is the majority of the art I do when I color I do use alcohol ink and it's bleed proof absolutely love it and I've only done one drawing in here so far so that's why I just have it in here but I've also decided to push myself and do two sketchbooks so I have a Strathmore watercolor sketchbook which I've only done one drawing in so far I do plan to do more drawings and I actually want to do some double page stuff too despite there being a couple of uh, little leaks there but I really do like the Strathmore series if you can't afford the render one and you like to do alcohol markers and mixed media the Strathmore one is super nice I love 
love it. They make really good sketchbooks, and I love the feel of them. Normally, I am a softback kind of guy, but I decided to go with the hardback on this one, and I do not regret it. It is a lot bigger, though, so you can see right there. Now, this is closer to the scale that I normally work at, so I do like that. Putting that to the side, I also have a tablet in here. Now, this is really good because, for one, I like to use references when I draw, and so this is really nice to have because I'll just load in my references. I have what's called the bank. Every artist has it. It's just interesting things that we see. Stuff like, ooh, I might draw that. Ooh, that looks cool. I have literally like 16 gigs worth of photos of just that's cool or references. And so I like to have them copied onto here just so that I can have them. I don't know what type of iPad. I know it's a Samsung, but I don't know the specific brand. I got this years ago. Oh, hey, you can see me, I guess. So I got this years ago, actually when I was at ECC. So it's lasted me a long time. It's a really good one. I just got a cheap little case right here so I can pop it open. And I also will sometimes keep some movies on here too. So if I'm working, I have something to listen to if YouTube isn't available because not every cafe has free Wi-Fi, which kind of sucks. In here is actually my favorite pen. I love this pen. It's like a wood body with some metal ends. It's blue instead of black ink, which kind of sucks, but I love this pen. It actually came with that Batman leather sketch journal I bought, which unfortunately was bamboo paper, so I never used it, and bamboo paper is like the worst. But I really like pen, so it just kind of chills in my bag because I like the pen. So that's that. And then over here, which if you guys have been following the channel, you know that I recently just posted my how to make my ultimate watercolor art video. And while this was meant to be at desk working, it actually works perfectly on the go. It fits like perfectly in this bag. And so when I want to do watercolor on the go, I will load it up into the bag. Now, if you notice, I don't have any of the brushes in here right now that I talked about in the video. I will explain why when we get to another pocket in here. But I love how just perfectly this chills right in there. And there is still room in here, by the way. Sometimes, very rarely, I do like to have another little sketchbook that I put right in here. That just fits perfectly in this little opening here. And it's just for like little jots, little ideas, little like, oh, let me just write that down. I really like having that there. I just left it upstairs and that's why you're not seeing it in this video. And lastly, this right here, this is my absolute favorite thing in this bag. This is actually a Speedball leather 48 count pencil case. I love this thing. This thing is amazing. Originally, I did have 48 canvas one, but I decided to upgrade to a leather one. I gave the canvas one to my dad and I do have the 120 canvas one. That's a really good one. However, it's a little bit overkill for me and takes up way too much space in the bag. I very, very rarely use it, but I do have it. And then just to show you what I like about this, you can see right here, we have two zippers and they're not jingling. And that's because just listen, they clip in just, just, oh, I love that. It's such a great detail. Now we're going to open up the top one because that's the one that gets used the most. And it's all of my tools that I like to use to make art with. Now you guys know I'm an inker, so I predominantly like to use dip pens, but dip pens on the go really don't work out that well because they're messy. It's really something you do at home. So I use a lot of fine liners. Now just to look through and walk you through, I do keep some extra lead in here. Two fine liners, a 05 and a 08. My eraser, this is a Tombow eraser, which I absolutely love. So here it is. I just didn't want to pull it out. I also have a ruler. This is just a clear ruler. I think it's by Rescott or Westcott. I can never remember the name. I did have cut it to fit in here. And then I don't have a Posca paint pen because they suck. I have a Malto paint pen and this is an extra fine. I absolutely love this one right here. Got a Tombow one, which is really good to get that flexible line with. And of course, another fine liner, this one being a 01. Really, these are the ones I like to use the most. I also use a 005 a lot. However, that's going to be in the back pocket right here. I also have a mechanical eraser. I'm a mechanical pencil and then two Pentel brush pens, a medium and a large. I use these so much. They are my absolute favorite, just my absolute favorite when it comes to being able to use a brush on the go. It really does feel like a brush dipped in ink. Absolutely love it. Opening up the next one here, it's an extra little eraser for my mechanical eraser and just a bunch more fine liners, a 005, a 01, 03, 05, 06, 08, 12, another Tombow brush pen. And then I also have a two, believe it or not, uh, I don't use these a lot. I probably should take them out but they're brush pens. Uh, one's a Faber-Castell Pip pen, the other one's a Copic one. They're nice. The problem is that I really like these ones a lot. The only time I ever use these is if I have to do like really tiny precision detail, but I've gotten so good with this one, I really don't need these anymore. And then this is another Pentel Pocket brush pen. However, this one's really cool because it's actually filled with a watered down ink. So it's an ink wash, which is really good for doing a smoke effect. I have so many of these because I love them. I have two of each, including one extra fine one, but that one I just keep at my desk. 
desk, so it's this one right here. But I do have the other ones uh, at my desk as well because I absolutely love these paint pens. They're just so nice. They're absolutely amazing. But yeah, this is the thing that gets used the most when it comes to the stuff in this bag. I absolutely love this thing. What I, What's great about it is it keeps everything organized. I love the look of it too. It has a very nice look. It sits on the desk really well. And just being able to open this up and have everything that I know I'm going to use right there in the front, nicely organized. I can just grab it whenever I want. It's just absolutely amazing. It does say it can hold 48. That's 48 pencils. I have fine liners and other tools in here, which are much thicker. So I'm of course going to be able to hold a lot less than that number. And that number again is based off of pencils, but it still is more than enough to get the job done for me. I absolutely love this. I wouldn't recommend the 24. Definitely spring the extra couple bucks to go with the 48. Just getting that extra storage and the extra tools in there is absolutely perfect. And if you can afford the leather, definitely go with the leather. It looks so nice. It feels so good and it looks so professional. And one more thing to show you before we move on to the other pockets and that's my alcohol markers. And yes, I do have, of course, a nice little container for them. This is the Prismacolor container and I absolutely love this. I'm so sad this got discontinued because this is, in my opinion, the best case for alcohol markers. I do have the Copic one. However, I personally don't recommend it and I'm going to show you why because we're going to pop this open and you can see I have quite a few different types. I have Winsor Newton, I have Copic, I have Prismacolor, Spectre Noir. I really, really like this specific marker case because unlike the other marker cases out there, like the ones that Copic have, well, I will admit the design of that marker case is better. That one only takes Copics. You can't put the other markers in there. Spectre Noir is too big and then Winsor Newton and Prismacolor are too round. They're really designed to only fit Copic Sketch and Chow. Copic Classic doesn't even fit in there, which sucks. Granted, I only have one Classic Copic, but still, I think that's really disappointing. And the fact that this one, you can put any type of marker in there is absolutely amazing to me. So that's why this is the one I carry with me. Now, what's really cool about this kit is you can actually fold it like this, lift up this rope right here, and then we're going to actually push this bead lock down and it displays all your markers this way, which is really nice. So you can see them and you can just grab them. Now, I'm going to be honest, this is not my normal layout when it comes to my alcohol markers that I travel with. And that's because it kind of varies and changes depending on the day, depending on what I feel like drawing. Honestly, the only thing you can guarantee that I will have in here is this skin tone set right here and this red, which is R46, it's my favorite red shade that Copic makes, and usually some type of metallic marker like this one right here. I do have a Winsor Newton metallic. So that's really all you can guarantee. Definitely a couple blues, at least one purple, some yellow, some green. So those specifics change, but I really do like this set. I think it's a really, really good marker case and the fact that you can put any type of marker in here. The fact that Prismacolor is not stingy about it, unlike Copic, where it's like, no, you can only put Copics in your Copic case, really surprised me with something that I actually really love how and admire Prismacolor for doing. And it's a shame they discontinued this because as far as I know, you can find these on clearance pretty much everywhere because they're no longer going to be making them. So definitely pick it up when you see it because it is honestly worth it. If you do any marker art, this is a case you definitely want to get. It keeps everything nice and safe. And for me, I just like to put it in this little back pocket right in here because one nice thing is I have everything in here and then I have my back pocket for all my extra random stuff. The, again, this is another good pocket to put like sketchbooks or blocks in there that take up the whole space. But I end up mostly just putting my alcohol markers in there because why not? Now we're going to move on to this little pocket right here before we finish it off with the last pocket, which is one of my favorites. And what I like about this pocket is that it makes it super quick and easy to access all my electronics, like my flash drives. I was an animation major. I would spend hours at the computer and just being able to quickly access that was really nice. Zipping this open, and this is just a little travel case you can get at Dollar Tree. I like to keep a phone charger in there. And of course my flash drive. This is a 128 gig flash drive. This is the MVP. I was able to store everything. And I do mean everything for all of my projects, all my classes on this one flash drive. It was a little expensive. I think it was like 50 bucks, but it is well worth it. It's better than just buying a terabyte hard drive. Granted, that is nice and I have one, but I wasn't going to install the unlocking software on my school's computer. So yeah, the flash drive was more than enough and I absolutely love it. I just love how it fits right in there. And if you're going to put anything in this pocket, I would recommend a flash drive in some type of protective case just so it stays nice and safe. All right. So now we're in the home stretch with the final pocket. We're just going to do this little claps right here. And these are adjustable too. So you can adjust them to the size you want. If you put something really big in here, you need it to be a little 
little bigger. I like that little detail. Again, it's the little details of this bag that I really appreciate. But opening up, we have the final pocket, which is broken up into a few different sections. You have this main pocket here, a smaller one here, and then a bunch of other tiny little pockets. I really appreciate that detail. Starting in the back, I have this thing right here. This is actually a collapsible dog bowl. This is really good for when I paint, and because Coco travels with me, I did write paint on the bottom to make sure I don't give Coco the wrong bowl. But yeah, you can get some actual watercolor travel bowls. The thing is that pretty big, they're pretty bulky, and they're also like seven to ten dollars. This was a dollar at Dollar Tree, so why not? Absolutely love this. It does come in handy a lot more than you think. Next is going to be this little lapel here. This is really meant for keys, but I actually use it for this little keychain here, and that's because I store a couple things in here. At the bottom, I have a kneaded eraser. Not just any kneaded eraser, a really gunky kneaded eraser. This is really good for just like a smooth pencil blend. I don't do a lot of penciling in terms of like heavy detail, like technical art or full on illustrations. I do comic art, so I solidify everything in ink and it is not wanting to come out. There we go. So yeah, this is really good for that. I absolutely do love it because I have several new erasers that I keep that are just full with charcoal and dirty and messy because it does come in handy to have them for smooth blend, something that you can really kind of go in and mold it to the exact shape you need. So I just keep that in there. In the middle, I do keep a normal kneaded eraser and that's right here. You can see this one comes out a little bit easier and this is really good if I just want to do some layering erasing. I don't want to actually erase the whole thing. Really good for subtle touch up and clean up. So that's why I keep it in there. I don't use this one a lot because, well, again, I'm not doing full on penciling and illustrations. I do comic art, but still they come in handy. And the top one I actually use the most and that's this right here. These are little Q-tips. This is really good if I want to do a Kirby Crackle effect or do some really fun textures with ink. Normally I don't carry ink with me in here, but because I have the Pentel brush pen, I can always goop up a little bit of it and of course use it to do my inking, which is super nice. So I do have this little thing right here. Moving on, I do have a bunch of other little goodies. I will admit, don't have anything on the bottom. Sometimes I do put a full ruler right here. I didn't do that now because, well, I have a new ruler in here, which I will show you. But in this pocket, I like to keep a little battery. So this is a fully charged charge mander. I really like it. It's my favorite battery. My grandfather got it for me. So it just chills in my bag. Same thing with this. I also have a little Presto in here. This is my favorite whiteout pen for different effects and different layers. So I like to keep one in there because as much as I love this and it does kind of fit in my pencil case, I'd rather just keep it separate just in case it leaks. It's never leaked on me, but it's one of those things where I'm a little worried. So I'm just going to put it over here. In this pocket, I have a colorless blender. This one's just a Prismacolor one because I have a bunch of these and you know just chills right in here here's pretty cool this is actually the refills for the pentel pocket brush i absolutely love that whenever these run out you could just unscrew it and screw it onto the new one so this is really good to have because since i use so much of it it's good to have a backup just in case and if i'm on the field i can switch them out when i get home put a new one in there i got a white gel pen as much as i love the molotov paint pen sometimes i still need my little gel pen here and there this pocket i have some extra band-aids in case i get hurt but i also have benadryl a phone charger and my little headphones these i got at cvs with a coupon for like 15 bucks. They're really nice wireless headphones. I've had them for like three years now and they're really, really good. So definitely recommend them. Over here in the last pocket, we have a few little goodies. So I'm gonna pop this out. We have this, which is a collapsible ruler. I absolutely love this. It looks super cool. It's a full-size ruler. Well, it goes up to 12 inches. The normal rulers I use are like 16 inches, but still it fits nice and snug in the bag. I love how this has a cork body to it. I love how it's steel and metal, so it has a good feel. I also love this folding mechanism. And the last thing in here are some brushes. These are really good for watercolor because these are Kalinsky Mimic travel brushes. And then I have three in here. I have, I think this is a three, this is a six, and this is a 12. All I do are unscrew this way, pull out, and then re-screw. These are really nice brushes. I really like them. I don't use them a lot because, again, right now, I'm not doing a lot of watercolor on the go. I do plan to do some more. I do plan to actually go out around Ybor City and actually kind of do a little bit of painting, do a little bit of photography, do a little research because the comic I'm working on, it's heavily based off of Ebor, so we want to get some visual references. But these are really nice brushes. I do like them. And originally, I did keep some brushes in my actual watercolor travel tin, but since I got these, I don't need to anymore, and I just leave them at my desk. So yeah, absolutely love these brushes, and they're really affordable. I think they were like 20 bucks on Amazon. I think I could be misremembering, but for the high quality brushes you get, I definitely recommend them. And they come in this nice little case right here. Totally not neat. I could probably put them somewhere in here without it, but I just love the look of it. And that is everything in my bag along with a full tour. I hope
hope you guys really liked this video. This was a lot of fun to film, and I really enjoy the process of going through and examining my art and figuring out, no, not what is the most optimal way to do it, but what are the tools I use the most? What will be, I guess, the most efficient way? Not trying to optimize myself, but trying to really break down what I use, how I use it, what really works for me, and if it works for me, what will it work for you? You know, will you guys get something out of this video? These are all the tools that I take with me on the go. Again, it does change slightly with some of the contents and the markers, sometimes some of the pens I carry, sometimes I throw in some extra rulers, sometimes I throw in a couple extra stencils here and there. Either way, these are the tools that I like to use on the go. This is my travel art set. I'm sorry this video was a little bit longer. I meant it to be shorter, but you know me, I am a colossal windbag. But with that said, please let me know what you guys think of all this. Do you guys agree with me? Do you actually do it completely differently? I'm really curious to see what other artists use when they travel. And remember, I'm Jerry Rod of Balboa Productions. I draw a power my own soul. And stay tuned for more art and animation-based content. Thank you all so much for watching.